What's going on? It's Coach Williams, and I'm back for another breakdown. So today, we are going to talk Jaden Daniels again. And this time, we're going to talk about Jaden Daniels' best game. So I think personally, this was his best career game that I've ever seen him play. Um, there might be games where you know some of the statistics are a little bit better. Like I think people love the Florida game or whatever. But this was the game that made me go, if you want to take Jaden Daniels number two overall, I got no problem with it. So let's break this one down. So the first thing that I want you to notice, this first play that we're going to break down, I want you to notice his ability again to read the field. We talked about this in the first video. He reads the field really well, okay? So one thing that you'll notice, and we'll see it even better on the tight, is these guys, with the exception of him, are all on the same level. Typically, in man-to-man -man coverage, you're not going to have guys on the same level like this because you don't want to get picked on a switch release. So he knows pre-snap, this probably isn't man. They're trying to make me think it's man. It's zone coverage. And as you can see, it's cover three. So this is zone coverage. And now he knows all he has to do is read this underneath defender here. If this underneath defender widens, then he'll be able to throw the stick route here. If he stays where he is, he'll be able to throw the stick route here. So the defender stays where he is. Nice job of anticipating it, getting the ball out quickly, gets the ball to Malik Neighbors. And so you'll see it perfectly here from the tight look. You can see his eyes. He keeps looking out here. He knows, okay, all I got to do is read that defender. This is definitely zone. Gets it out there and gets a nice, easy completion. This is the type of stuff that shows up pretty consistently on tape with him. And we'll see this over the course of the video. He does a really good job of just like processing, reading the field. You know, anybody that has any questions about him just playing the quarterback position, you probably haven't dug deep enough into the tape. So <clears throat> this next play right here, this one is going to show off his ability to throw the ball with uh, velocity. So we talked about in the previous video, you know, there were some, you know, balls that were going under 40 miles an hour, made me have some questions about his arm strength. And so I do want to preface this. This game is a bit of an outlier, but man, he was putting some mustard on these throws. So we'll see this one right here. So he throws this ball. Layers it over two defenders, but throws it with velocity. And so this one goes 51.5 miles an hour. So we talked about it before. The range, the typical range for you know NFL quarterbacks, they're going to throw between 45 and 50 on drive throws. Well, this drive throw, he gets above 50. So he throws a heater on this one. Okay, So we'll be able to see it from the tight too, just how quickly this ball gets in there and the window that he has to throw into. Boom. Look at that. Three defenders in here. Gets that ball in there. This is a really impressive throw. And these are the type of things that you want to be able to see on tape from him. All right, so this next one here, again, this shows his ability to read the field. Okay, So he knows the second he catches the ball, right? he's going to read this defender here. Defender turns his back. He knows now it's man-to-man -man coverage. So if it's man-to-man -man coverage, this is a uh, slot fade. So they're going to get a hitch here. This guy's going to have to drive it. And then, you know, just from a, a schematic standpoint, when you're watching film, you'll understand why uh, teams do this. The reason why this slot fade play has become really popular is it creates so much space. The quarterback doesn't have to be as accurate. He's got all this space. What are they about? three yards outside the hash and he has all the way from there to the sideline to be able to put this ball in a position for his guy to be able to go get it and then the deep ball accuracy is beautiful so let's just run it one more time here let's run it one time through and we'll just see man-to-man -man coverage corner drives it touchdown beautiful accuracy there okay so again Eyes in the right place pre-snap. Where his eyes go. Okay, it's man. 
And he does a good job of just getting it out there. The other thing I wanted to note here, so we talked about this in the last video too, about the hands, right? Wondering about his hand size. So I'll be interested to see, you know, at his pro day, if they measure that stuff. But one thing that I really liked about this play, even though it's not a quick game throw, look at how quickly he finds the laces on the ball. If he does have small hands and he needs the laces, does a really good job of getting those laces really fast, just like Joe Burrow. All right, on this next one here. So again, we're going to get an opportunity to see another drive throw from him and see just how fast it's going here, okay? So... This situation here, this is cover three, okay? So we can see middle field close, cover three. And so we get this seam. The seam is the cover three beater here, and he fits it again into this tight window. And this one is going 47.6 miles an hour. So the way that I'm going to start measuring this is if you can get over 47 and a half, because that's in between that 45 and that 50. So if you get above that average range, then, you know, to me, that's a heater. That's a good throw. So 47.6, just a tick over that, like that. And then he gets the ball into the hands of neighbors with space to be able to get some run after catch. So we'll be able to see it from this angle as well. Gets in here. Boom. Look at that. In between over this defender. And this is throwing the ball with velocity and touch. Getting it over that underneath defender. Really impressive stuff here. He was throwing some heaters in this game. Okay, so we're in the red zone now. And so we're going to see that slot fade concept again. We know it's man-to-man -man coverage because we're reading this defender down here. Out here, he turns his back. That's how we know. And boom, the accuracy. Again, so much space to be able to be accurate in here i know a lot of people want to knock him because this is a concept that he threw a lot and it does make the quarterback's life easier if you get this man-to-man -man coverage like this but either way you got to have the accuracy to put the ball on the guy and he does it perfect drops it in the bucket so again you can see the eyes he's looking out here reading it he knows pre-snap where he wants to go with this thing touchdown it's like a handoff all right next play here I like this one because, again, it shows off his ability to process, his ability to read the field, okay? So we're going to get inverted smash here. So this guy's going to run the out, and then the receiver is going to run the corner. We've got cover two. So now he needs to read this defender here, this corner, this flat defender. And so it's a high-low read. If the corner stays up, he's going to throw the corner. If the corner goes back, he's going to throw it into the flat. Gets a nice big window to be able to throw. And then look at the anticipation on this throw. He anticipates the throw. He's throwing it before the receiver gets out of his break. Sorry that I didn't put the anticipation clock on this one. But we don't need it. We can see this is great anticipation here to be able to get it. Not a tight window since the corner sucks up. But it's a really good job of just reading the field and making the correct throw. So very smooth quarterback play from him. Really love this stuff. All right. So next play here. Again, so this one, uh, I think that this is a blown coverage. Um, so it looks like cover two up top. And then down here at the bottom, it looks like it might be quarters or also cover two as well. And this, uh, you know, safety here is kind of like out of, like, he's out of position. You know, he's kind of all over the place. I think that this is probably quarters over to this side. Um, but you would want this safety to be a little bit deeper. So I think it's quarter, quarter, half. Either way, blown coverage here. One-on-one -on -one situation with the safety. And again, he throws this thing out there. And then, again, it's like a handoff. He just drops it in the bucket. He continues to show off that deep ball accuracy. The other thing, too, that's really impressive about this is he's throwing this ball from the opposite hash. You always want to see those opposite hash throws, gets it up, and gets it down. And one of the nice things about his deep ball as well is, you know, he gets a lot of air under it. He does a really good job of getting air under these throws. You see some guys, they throw deep balls, and they're a little bit flat. He does a good job of getting that thing up. So impressive throw right there. 
All right, so this one, I put this one on here because I had a nice little conversation with Coach 007 over DM. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you should follow him. He's a really good follow. So I was talking about, uh, you know, Jaden Daniels' arm strength and wondering why he might, you know, not be able to, to you know, drive the ball as effectively as some of the other guys. And he made a really good point. It might be because he's got that slight frame. We don't know how much he weighs. Does he weigh 200 pounds? Is he weigh 210? Is he under 200? And he was saying, you know, because, you know, when quarterbacks throw the ball, they want to be able to use momentum and leverage and, you know, opposites and all that stuff. I'm not some quarterback coach, but I've, I've listened to quarterbacks talk about this thing and talk about these things. Quarterback coaches, you know, you want to be able to use your body to generate more force. And he doesn't have much body to be able to generate force with. So on this one, you know, it's a drop eight concept. And so he gets out of the pocket and you'll notice he's got to get his feet set to throw this ball. Okay. So he gets his feet set and the ball takes a while to get there. I didn't, um, <clears throat> I didn't do the miles per hour on this one. Cause he does, you'll see from the uh, wide angle, he does get a little bit of air under it. So that wouldn't be fair to him to do the, the miles per hour on it, but he's got to get his feet set. And I get that he's rolling left here, but like watch the tape on Caleb Williams and we'll do some more breakdowns on Caleb Williams. He'll roll left and he don't need to get his feet set. He will just hum that thing because he's got a cannon. And then also Drake May, Drake May rolling left. He doesn't always have to get his feet set. So I, it might be because of the weight. That's why the arm strength isn't as impressive as some of the other guys. And so this ball takes a while to get there. And the receiver does get his hands on it, so he should definitely catch it. But, you know, it hangs up in the air, and it gives the defender an opportunity to be able to go in there and hit this guy and knock it out. So you'll see he breaks a pocket, and you'll see. The other thing, too, that you'll notice on this one is, you know, when you watch Daniels, he's got a nice, quick, compact release. But on this throw where he's rolling left, look at the windup that he has to have here. Okay, look at this big windup that he has to have, and that's not typical of him. He usually has a nice, fluid, snappy release. He's got a wind up to throw this thing. So, something to keep track of. All right, so this one. So, we get pressure on this one, and so they do a really good job of disguising this thing. So he gets pressure on this one. And so he should just get the ball out here to the hot, right? Just get the ball out here to the hot. Even though it is only a, uh, you know, four-man rush, he should get the ball out to the hot because from his perspective, from this picture, it looks like a blitz. And he's got a wide open guy here in the flat, but he doesn't see it. So he doesn't get to it. And then this one, he throws it on the run. So impressive throw on the run. But this one, he's rolling right, and it's a much shorter throw. But either way, that's one thing that I've noticed on tape with him. There's not a ton of, you know, out-of-structure passing plays. They're usually scrambling to run rather than scrambling to throw. And so the things that we talked about earlier might be part of the reason for that, that he doesn't have the size to be able to create the momentum and the power that he wants to be able to throw the ball with. But it's just something that I've noticed over the course of time. But this is, you know, him creating an out-of-structure play. It's just not really like one of those big, explosive, wow plays, but, you know, it gets the job done. All right. So, next play here. So, this one, um, you know, just another example of him having the ability to create and make plays. But... There is a little bit of a question that I have on this one. So his eyes are down here. He's reading this. This looks like it could be uh, kind of palmsy, right? So this looks like this could be, um, you know, quarters, but the corner is reading too, and he's going to drive the out route. But if he anticipates this throw here, he probably can get this one. He could probably fit this one in here, but he hesitates on it, doesn't like it. Then all the other windows are kind of tight. Like this would be a, a tough ball to be able to get in there, right? This would be a tough ball because it kind of turns, when it's palms, it's quarters, it kind of turns into cover two. So this would be a tough one to be able to fit into the window, right? This one here, maybe up top, get the ball in the flat, who knows? But he takes off and runs. You know, he has that ability to make plays with his legs. But 
something comes up that we talked about before. A little reckless here. I know he's trying to get out of bounds, but like, got to get out of bounds faster because he gets blown up. <laughs> gets blown up on the sideline. Yeah, they throw a flag, but like, Okay, what happens in a game in the NFL if you do this, they throw the flag or whatever, but, you know, you break your shoulder or something like that, right? He's got to take care of his body, especially since he's a uh, slider-framed dude. So, big hit there. All right, so one of of the plays that I like here, again, this one is more of like a uh, sim pressure, so it really is only a four-man pressure. But to his side where he's looking, it looks like a blitz. So what does he do? This is the type of stuff that you want to see from your quarterback. He replaces the blitzer. Boom. All right, so he throws this ball in here. Since that guy vacates that zone, nice, easy read. Gets an easy, quick completion on first down. So we'll see it from the tight here. Catch. Boom. And see how quick he does that? This is processing, right? This is what we're talking about when we're talking about processing. It's quick. It's fast. It gets out there. So really impressive there from Jaden Daniels. All right. So this one, again, we're, we're measuring the arm strength on this one. So, you know, we talked about it before, and we were talking about how, you know, him throwing the ball from – the opposite hash was taking forever to get there. Well, this throw is much more impressive. Gets there much faster, 45 miles an hour at the lower band of the measurement. Lower band of the measurement. It ends up being, you know, a tackle or whatever, but like still, it's it's, it's nice to see these ones that are not under 40 miles an hour, okay? But like I said before, this is this game is more of an outlier. In, in most of the games, you are going to see the ball take a long time to get there. So the question becomes, you know, is the arm strength thing, is it something that he can work on? Is it something that he can improve and get better at? Is there some kind of mechanical thing where he can, you know, figure it out? Again, I'm not a quarterback coach. Like, can is there some kind of mechanical thing that he can do to generate more power? And we've seen uh, quarterbacks like Joe Burrow, right, get more arm strength and get more power over time. Okay, so again, this one just continuing to show, you know, intelligence here. So the design of this defense, this is um, 33 double cloud. So, you know, it's cover three from the safeties and then the corners are playing cover two. So I don't know if this is the design of the play or what, but there's no overhang defender here. There's nobody out here. So pre-snap, he can see that. And then this guy does not push out wide. There's nobody that ends up pushing out here. This linebacker is pushing the middle of the field, so you'd think that this guy would be getting out there. Don't know what the design of the defense is, but he reads it pre-snap. He sees there's a massive hole for him to be able to fit this into this window. And boom, he gets the football out quickly. Quickly and decisively. Really good job from Jaden Daniels, and we'll see it from the tight. He peeks out here. He sees no overhang, catch, step, throw. No wasted movement. No wasted movement, catch, step, throw. That's what you want to see from your quarterback. All right. On this next one. So this one here, it's, uh, you know, just like a little slant route here. Okay. So there's a little slant route. And so this looks like man-to-man coverage as well. Typically, you're going to hit the, the second slant in the window on this thing. And so... You know, this one only goes 43 miles an hour, but I don't have a problem with this one because it's a slant route and you're not in the red zone. So, like, typically you don't want to throw the ball too hard when you're too close to a guy. That could, you know, end up causing it to bounce off the guy's face mask or whatever. You don't want to throw 60 mile an hour ball to a guy that's, like, pretty close to you. So I don't have as much problem with it. He fits it in the window as well. So it's all good. Nice, easy completion. So boom, catch, step, throw. And again, we're talking about the hand size thing here. Look at how quickly he gets the laces on this football. It's a great job. Boom, catch, step, throw. This is what we want to see from Jaden Daniels. All right, so next play here. So this one is the one that, you know, 
gets me really excited, this play. When you're thinking about Jaden Daniels and how he's going to fit into an offense and, you know, can he, can he generate more arm strength? Can he generate more power? Well, this play, he's running, sprint out, okay? So we've got this out route here with the go behind it. And so he's throwing on the run again. I was saying, you know, there's not a lot of throws on the run with him. I'd like to see more with his athletic profile and stuff like that. Well, he throws this ball on the run. And oh my Lord, this ball right here is a heater. Okay. This one is going 50 miles an hour, sprint out on the run to his right, hits the guy in his hands, and he throws it so hard that the guy falls down. <laughs> like this is an impressive throw from Jaden Daniels. So we'll see it. You'll really be able to see him knock the guy over from this tight angle. He throws the ball so hard that the dude can't even turn up field to get more yardage. So again, these are the type of things that I'm seeing on tape where I'm like, I think he can get the arm strength thing down. It's, it's become less of a concern for me. I still think of like the big, you know, six quarterbacks that people are talking about in this draft. He has the weakest arm. But when you see throws like that, it makes me go, you know, he can do it. I have confidence that he can do it. All right, so this one. All right, so this play here, we're going to, right? We're always talking about the good things and the bad things. We're not just going to love them up the whole time. So this one here, we get zone coverage here. And so. This looks like cover three to me. And so typically with these cover threes, like we saw earlier, you're going to want to hit these seams. So let's see it. So boom, you're going to want to anticipate this seam and drive this ball in here. Right? He ends up being open. You're going to want to try to throw this one in here, but he holds on to the football for too long. And like, yeah, maybe that's a tight window. Maybe that's not a throw he should make. I don't know. From a judgment call standpoint, I think that he could make it, but whatever. You definitely got to hit this one then. You got to get to your check down. And he doesn't get to the check down here. And so then the ball goes in the air. He almost fumbles it. So there are these lapses that you see sometimes in the middle of the field. And we've seen him hit some. And we've seen him miss some. So you'd just like to see a little bit more consistency from him. You don't want to see him hold the ball like this. Put the ball in harm's way. But, you know, we got to show the good and the bad. Good and the bad. All right, so next one, We what do we want to see, though, from the quarterback in the game? We want to see in-game improvement, and you'll see that on this play right here from Jaden Daniels. We get another drop eight concept, so there's eight guys in coverage. It's going to be really hard to throw the football down the field, so nobody's open. Everybody's attached except for the backside drag, hits the backside drag. And this guy is able to get some run after catch. And we'll see it from the tight angle as well. So drop eight, only a three-man rush. He reads it out. You would like to see him get it out in front so it'd be easier. It'd be an easier rack opportunity so he could hit it on the run. But that's nitpicking a little bit. It's a good job of reading coverage and getting the ball to the appropriate target. All right, so next play here. These are plays that I really like to see from quarterbacks. We saw one from Drake May um, in the video where we were comparing him to Jordan Love. It's when you get those you know, opportunities to draw the defense offside and then go for the big play, go for the explosive. Doesn't matter. You don't need to read coverage. You just want to throw it as deep as you can. And this is beautiful. Like I said before, he gets a ton of arc under the ball, right? He gets he like he gets that ball up there. He does not have a flat deep ball. And he throws this one up to his guy, and it ends up like a handoff. Really accurate ball here. The other thing you want to notice, where is he throwing the ball from? Opposite hash. Beautiful throw. That thing gets up and out of the screen and drops right in the bucket. Awesome throw from Jaden Daniels. All right, so this is the last one here. And so this was the last play of the game. Game on the line in this situation. He gets pressured. He gets out. And then again, he's on the run, and he's got to get his feet set to be able to throw this ball. 
and it's one of the slower balls we've seen today. 41.6 miles an hour, and the safety is able to get in there and make a play on the football. So the other thing you're going to want to notice about this play, so he has to get his feet set, and that doesn't allow him to anticipate. If he can throw this ball on the run like Caleb Williams usually does, this is going to be a completion. He's going to get that thing in there. I mean, his receiver might get crushed, but the ball is going to make it there. And so that's the difference between, you know, winning and losing. Now it's a tough throw. It's not an easy throw. I'm not sitting here, you know, trying to say, like, this is the easiest thing in the world. But, you know, if we're comparing the arm strength, it's not it's not close with some of the top guys in the draft. So, So that's it. I hate to end it on a bad one, but this was by far Jaden Daniels' best game. He answered some questions. He was able to throw the ball with some serious velocity, had some accurate balls, throwing the deep ball deep down the field, and the reading of coverage, the reading of leverage. This is what we're talking about when we say leverage reads and processing and reading the field and all that kind of stuff. And so he's an older prospect. He should be able to do those things, but it's nice when you see it on tape. Okay, so I think that Jaden Daniels, like I've continued to say, is one of the three best quarterbacks in this draft. And any team that gets him is going to be excited to be able to have him. So that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one. So as always, you know what it is. It's Coach Williams, Ballhawks. We fly. I'm out. Peace.